All right, so here's a question that I received. Following the typical marketing teachings, like creating a sales funnel, took the magic out of my business. I want what I do to be fun and inspiring for both me and my potential clients. How do I reclaim the magic in my business? <laughs> I love this question. I love this question. And as always, I welcome your comments below. If you have any thought that comes to mind at any point during this video, pause the video, add your comment below as a contribution to the person who asked it and probably as a contribution to your future self that is going to be tempted by the many marketing and business tactics that uh, easily take magic out, out, out of business. Okay, so here's, here's what I have to say about this. Magic um, happens uh, when we don't expect it, <laughs> okay? If we plan something to the T and then we execute on it and we know what's going to happen, right? Then there's no magic. Think about it, right? Then it's like, well, I, I knew that was going to happen. Yay. <laughs> okay. It's not, it's not fun anymore if there's no delightful surprise. Now, we don't want a bad surprise. We, we want delightful surprises to happen, right? And, and the other key aspect, so, so one is magic requires delightful surprises on the one hand. On the other hand, magic comes from the intention of, you could say, play or connection, heartfelt connection with the audience um, of deep joy. So on the one hand, magic requires delightful surprise, delightful surprise. On the other hand, it requires an intention to play and to deeply connect. And sadly, uh, sales funnels and a lot of marketing tactics and strategies are born of a control and manipulation mindset. Okay, plan and control mindset. I mean, let's back up a little bit here and realize that marketing originally came, the, the, the discipline of marketing was created by a lot of men who were originally in military, right? <clears throat> the military came before marketing. And some of the successful people, people trained in military, you know, went into corporate America right? After their military experiences. And guess what? They had to come up with marketing. So marketing, first of all, came from corporations, right? That's the discipline of marketing, industry of marketing. The foundational knowledge of marketing came from there. This is why there's things like, you know, dominate, dominate the market mind share of the market. And to, and the whole thing of idea of sales funnel, it's, it's like, it's very um, assembly line, like militaristic, Right. This is why there's no magic in it because you're supposed and and also scientific science is also part of this. Now science can have magic in it too, but but essentially it came from this plan and control mindset of well if I if I speak in this kind of way if I write in this kind of way right if I write in this kind of way then it should make this person do this and then there's no it's it's then it's like well I know what's going to happen if I do this they do that. Okay. And yeah, if it's, if, if it makes you money and it makes you sales, it might be a delightful, delightful thing, but it's not, the, the surprise is gone because you know, it's supposed to happen. Right. And so I don't have a sales funnel. This is why for many years, I've always resisted it because I always resist this kind of plan and control mentality, which isn't soulful. I think, I think the soul, in my opinion, wants to be here to to play, to explore, to connect, to love. And so, how can we bring magic into business? How can we bring soulfulness into business and still make a profit <laughs> and still make enough money to stay in business? All right. All right. So, let's go let's talk about both the delightful surprises and the and, and the and the and the intention to play and to connect and to love. 
right? Because that's where the magic is. Let's start with the intention. If you show up, well, okay, actually, let's start with the delightful surprise part of it. Surprise means that you are detached from the outcome. I, I love authentic business because it's essentially a spirit. It's, it's so much of it is about a spiritual practice and detaching, doing things for its own sake and not be so attached to what the results are supposed to be is a spiritual practice, right? And, and pretty much every tradition, right? It, for example, from the Bhagavad Gita, a uh, you know, very famous quote that, you know, do things you have no right to the fruits of your actions. Famous quote, right? To the fruit, the fruits of your act, the fruits of your action, you have no right to. Only to the action itself do you have a right. You have to do what is your duty, and then you will attain the supreme, is what the very, very prayer phrase of the quote is. So, and in you know, Christian, you know, uh, traditions, any tradition, take any spiritual. Uh, path and there's something that goes like do what you do as a worship to the divine to god you know to your higher self or whatever you want to say do what you do as a as an act of worship rather than god i'm going to do this i'm going to plant this and you must give me that otherwise i'm not going to worship you anymore right otherwise i'm not going to do this for my soul anymore if if i do this thing you know, and it doesn't have the outer results, the material abundance that I expect. Well, I'm not going to do it anymore. All right, I'm not going to do this business anymore. That is the opposite of a spiritual practice. And I think the magic that this person talks about, in the most blessed way, it can come from the spiritual practice of being detached from the result. Because if we're detached from the result, then we can focus on the beauty of the intention, the beauty of looking at this task that we're doing. Yes, we are hopeful that if we send this email, we will get some sales. We are hopeful that if we create this offer and post it on social media, we will get some clients. We can have hope. We can, have, we can still design this offer so that it is matching the wants of our audience. Yes, that's a, that's a good thing to do. <clears throat> And yet, you can't, be, you can't attach your happiness and joy to the result. You have to attach your happiness and joy to the intention and the action itself, right? To say, yes, we're going to be, we're going to be wise. We're going to design an offer that people want. We're going to be wise. We're going to make sure we do the things consistently that tend to lead to good business results. Yes, we will do that. And yet, in the moment of doing it, we're not saying, I'm, I'm going to be unhappy until I get a result. And I'm going to do this gritting my teeth and just hustling and doing this thing and just, oh, I've got to get it done. Because then life is not worthwhile. No, in this moment of doing this, I'm going to set the intention to play, to explore, to serve in my heart, to love, essentially. I'm going to write this email from a place of service, of play, play, exploring my ideas. Yes, it's, the email is, has the intention, the design to get sales, fine. But it's what is getting sales? It's really serving your audience so uh, in such a way that they want, that they say, well, of course I want this thing, right? right? So it's still coming from a place of empathy and service. In this, e in this moment, as I'm writing this email, writing this post, making this video or whatever, I have this intention to play with ideas, play with my connection to my audience, and to serve them with love. And if I do that with intention, then this action is blessed. This action is blessed. No matter the result, this action has been worthwhile. And I think that's where the magic is, right? Because you, you're, you're, you're playing, you're connecting, you're serving from the heart, and then you're also detached from the results. So if the results come back, it's like, oh, nobody bought it. Okay, well, anyway, it doesn't matter because that action itself is worthwhile. I'm going to move on to the next action that is, is probably going to have a good result if, I, if I'm skillful at it, if I'm connected to my audience's wants, if I, stay, if I show up consistently for it. I'm still going to go to the next action and, and do it with playfulness, with love, 
that's where the magic is. And then, oh my gosh, oh, this time it got a sale. Oh, this time it got three clients or whatever. Let it delight you. Let the results, the delightful results, surprise and delight you. Oh, that's part of the magic too. But no matter the results magic, you always have the process magic. You always have the action in this moment that you can bring magical intention to, to play, to explore, to connect, to serve, to love. I hope this is making some sense. And I, as always, look forward to seeing if you want to add any thoughts below as well. Thank you so much.